What's up, YouTube? I'm Brett from Rancer Us. As always, guys, if y'all enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. We're on the road to 1,000. We hope you guys can help us get there. All right, so we finally made it to Episode 8 of American Gods. While I thought Episode 6 had really slowed it down and I was getting a little bit worried about this season or the second half of this season, Episode 7 and 8 really has picked it up. Episode 8 was a really beautiful episode um, that really was just focused on uh, letting go, finding yourself, uh, moving on from past loves and past regret, and it really just had a beautiful meaning to it. Uh, the way it was portrayed from beginning to end, I thought was really uh, fascinating and just perfect in a lot of different ways. Um, I had some small problems, um, you know, because the episode dealt with uh, Salim and with uh, uh, Laura. I felt like Salim had a really, really powerful ending um, and where he was able to let go of the gin. I felt like Laura pulled back at the very end and took away that powerful moment that could have been um, a little too quickly. Um, you know, revenge, vengeance, all of that stuff. That meant more to her at the end of the day than just letting go. Um, but we'll get all into that. Uh, let's just go ahead and we'll kind of just take it from the beginning. Uh, the episode begins in 1951. Uh, a man is fleeing the cops. He's been accused of sodomy. Uh, he's fleeing the cops and he happens to go into this uh, Grand Peacock Inn, which is a really a dying hotel. And the uh, uh, the woman that is over it is a trans woman, and uh, she he he asks for refuge. She gives it to him, um, and uh, she saves him from the cops. Tells the cops, you know, nobody come in there. Well, anyways, uh, after that, she goes to him uh, in the room, and and he thanks her. By blessing her because he's actually a god. Um, uh, a, and he blesses her um, in as being, and, and her just in general, and makes her immortal. He makes uh, her in um, a place of refuge for people of the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community um, where that they can find, be safe. And uh, feel comfortable with who they are. And um, of course, uh, you know, it's it's going to play a bigger role uh, when Laura and Salim get there. And Salim is still holding on hope uh, that he will uh, reconnect with the Jinn. Um, and even though there's this bellboy there that is like, really into him Salim pulls back and he's like eh, I'm not I'm not there yet you know I'm attracted to him but I'm not I'm not going to go there because he feels like it's if he does it's he would have to let go of of uh of of the gin and I really kind of like the back and forth between him. I forget the. I think the bellboy's name was Kai. Um, I enjoyed the 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 back and forth and kind of the relationship between Kai and Salim and that. Uh, uh, I thought they were actually really good for each other. I'm. I, it was almost kind of like where he was able to find the happiness uh, in Kai that he wanted to find in the Jin. Um, where the Jin was willing to go so far with him, uh, Kai was willing to um, really accept him for who he was. Um, and that's something that I thought was beautiful in this episode because for so long, you know, when we see the Jin, you know, he's never been one that has 
I feel like that is accepted Salim for who he was. Um, you know, it always goes back to the whole religion aspect with Salim. Um, you know, the Jinn's never been very respectful of that. Uh, but that, but it, but Salim's religion uh, centers around who he is as an individual, and um, just like, uh, but 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 I mean, it just feels like. Uh, the Jinn was never respectful of that. And by not accepting that aspect of Selim, he never was um, he never was taking Selim as who he was. Where this Kai actually was accepting Selim, bad sweater and all. And so, I thought that part was actually really beautiful. Um, they get to this, they get to this Grand Peacock Inn. Uh, with uh, with uh, uh, looking for Liam Dole. Uh, that is a leprechaun, and of course Laura is looking for his leprechaun as a means of uh, getting to uh, to a Sweeney stash so that she can recover Wednesday's spear. Well, they get there, and uh, Liam. She finds out that Liam was actually hired um, before Sweeney to kill her. He chose to refuse that offer, and Wednesday actually destroyed his lucky coin, uh, basically destroying his life and making him aware that instead of being a lawyer, which he was, uh, he then had to be a barkeep that was down on his luck. Um, so, you know, that was kind of, it's kind of cold. It shows just how cold um, Wednesday can be. You know, he's not a man that's going to be trifled with. You know, he's got, he seems like he's got this really calm, cool demeanor, but he's actually really cold inside in a lot of different ways. Um, but after finally convincing Liam to... Um, to find the spear, to uh, they she makes a deal with him. Uh, I'll give you the lucky coin, uh, Sweeney's lucky coin, if you will recover the spear for me. Um, believing that she's got really bad intentions for the spear, uh, Liam doesn't really want any part of it, but finally does consent to it, and she ends up giving upon going to Salim. And talking it over with Selim, um, she decides to pull a Selim and trust somebody for once. Uh, at first, she kind of feels like she's been screwed over again. Uh, but she actually finds that Liam was actually good on his word in the end. She has this moment, though, where she's talking to Selim, and I was like, oh no. No, no. Here we go again where she's going to go and belittle Salim, blame him for every bad thing that's happened, uh blame him for um blame him for uh telling her to give that over and now because she thinks she's going to die because she can't kill Wednesday and the new gods are going to kill her. Uh, because she's not able to fulfill that contract. Uh, she kind of does start off belittling him a little bit, but then she turns it kind of around, and it really kind of made it uh, into like something special where that she finally admits, hey, you know what, Salim, I actually do care about you. I care about you enough that I don't want you to die. I want you to stay here where I feel like you're safe. Um, hide from the new gods for as long as you can, and I'm going to separate away from you where that maybe my life will be enough uh, for them to take um, and they'll spare yours in that regard. I thought that was a really noble thing that she did in that regard. But, um, you know, when it come to that, I was like, I was like, that's kind of cool. But then at the same time, I didn't really understand Salim's response of kind of like, I'm living my life 
Um, however, I see fit now, and I'm not running from the new gods. I kind of agreed with Laura when Laura says, uh, well, that's stupid. Uh, because, you know, it's great. Hey, you found your identity. You found who you were. You finally accepted yourself as a gay man. You finally accepted that the gin isn't coming back. You've moved on for your for, uh, uh, with your life uh, with someone else. But that still has literally nothing to do with the new gods. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. It's great. It's great you found yourself, Celine. It's great. But you're going to die. And you need to, instead of being like, oh, well, I'm cool with it. I'm not running from these people. You should have been like, you know what, Laura? I think you're right. I think we're going to try to find some way out of this where that we can try to um, to to kill Wednesday so that now we're both not going to die. Like, I felt like that would have been a more reasonable response in this really uh, uh, optimistic way of, I'm not going to let them rule me, kind of. I'm going to live my life as I see fit. Which, in any other circumstance, might have been a really kind of beautiful thing to say. But it really didn't have anything to do with what they were talking about in that exact moment. Uh, so, yeah, I kind of didn't really get that. Um, now, as far as the ending of it, um, she, where I said earlier in the video, you know, Salim, he does move on uh, with his life. He ends up sleeping with Kai. He, um, he, like I said, he accepts who he is and accepts that the gin has moved on. Where I felt like Laura, even when she was, in, she's on a bridge and she's giving this speech and she's releasing um, Sweeney's ashes. And she makes this point to say, I kind of felt something for you because we were both broken. And uh, we were both messed up and we both screwed up a lot. And I was like, that's all you really liked? I mean, the guy did kind of save your life in a lot of different ways. Like, he gave up a lot for you. He basically gave up his life for you. Um, and that's all you can say is you're a screw up and I'm a screw up, so... That's why we like. That's why I liked you. Like I, I kind of felt like, kind of felt like something more poetic could have come out of that moment. But I guess that's Laura, and that's just as poetic as what we're gonna get. Uh, that's as much of a I love you as you're gonna get from her. Um, too often in this series, I like cynical. I like cynical. I'm cynical myself. I'm an extremely cynical person. Um, I don't take really anything or anybody at face value very much. But at the same time, um, I kind of feel like Laura's character could be, that cynicism could be pushed back a little bit, where that you could maybe get some real Laura instead of this, 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 Thing, this shield that she puts in front of her that's made of this cynicism. I really wish we could see behind that a little bit. And it seems like every time I think that we're about to, like when she goes to purgatory and like when she comes back and she realizes that Sweeney's been killed, those moments, it's like none of those moments make her go, you know what, I'm going to be a better person. It's like she always reverts back to her old self and she always hides behind that cynicism. Nothing has changed and I feel like her character is kind of stuck in that a little bit too much. But overall, I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed overall the whole Celine um, storyline, the story arc of it. I felt like Laura's was good except at the very end where she pulled back. Um, but as far as the other part of this, uh, episode is when Tyr basically, uh, tricks 
uh, tricks uh, Shadow Moon into going with him to the wolf's den, uh, telling him that that's where his father is needing him. And uh, basically, he drugs uh, at a gas station, he drugs uh, Shadow Moon. And a guy that sees him being drugged goes up there to uh to Shadow Moon and he's like, ah, oh, you know, is he having a seizure? What is going on exactly? And instead of just like knocking the guy out, he just like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna rip your throat out. I kind of felt like if you're a god of justice and you're talking all about, you know, being honorable and things along those lines, I'm like you didn't, did you really have to kill the guy? Like, you couldn't just knock the guy out. Like, I kind of felt like that was, like, goes against everything that he's been stating. Um, it's where you see really just how ruthless Tyr can be. Um, I thought that um, them making the uh, more out of the Tyr... Uh, Wednesday uh, rivalry by saying it wasn't just Demeter. Demeter was just one of many uh, times that Odin has gone by, or Wednesday has gone behind him and ridiculed him, took something from him, um, including his hand. Um, so there's these. Uh, I enjoyed. I enjoyed that. Or I like the idea that it was more than just the meter. Because if it was just the meter, I was like, okay, that's, you know, you're, you're eternal. And then one woman 300 years ago, it just completely and totally, you know, makes you a rival. So I'm glad they added more depth to that. Um, and at the end, I will say I was... Um, I was kind of I was kind of interested, and maybe because of that, I'm a Vikings fan. Uh, the idea that they that he was actually Tyr was going his intention was to do the Blood Eagle, which of course you know if you're a Vikings fan you know exactly what the Blood Eagle is. He was going to actually do that on Shadow Moon. I was kind of hoping that he would get close to that, and then. That's when Wednesday would come in, but it seemed like it kind of seemed like uh, Shadow Moon was really in no danger at the time that um, that Wednesday finally comes to to uh, saving. Wednesday says that he basically offers a, he agrees to uh, give his life for his sons. Tyr says, "Well, that don't sound much like you," and. Um, Wednesday says, well, I never said I was going to offer my life. He ends up challenging him to a duel. Um, it looks like Tyr is going to kill Wednesday. Um, but Shadow Moon interferes. Tyr uh, goes and says, well, since you've interfered, now I have to kill you. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Wednesday goes and kills Tyr. Uh, stabbed him from behind. To me, it was a little bit underwhelming. The fight scene really wasn't as uh, amazing as what I had pictured in my head or I thought for a whole week it was going to be. Um, I still think, you know, I felt like there could have been more. I thought there could have been more where that they were... Uh, you know, their fight scene, or maybe their banter back and forth, but there really wasn't any uh, really talk, and there really wasn't that much fighting. I thought the way that uh, Wednesday finally finished off Tyr was a little bit underwhelming. I also thought um, that, you know, uh, we actually got to see a little bit more of what Wednesday is. Wednesday does actually care about uh, Shadow Moon. Um, and, but you know, Tyr makes this one comment, uh, me killing you will be easier, something along the lines of 
quicker and easier than and then he gets stabbed and killed by Wednesday. I wonder if he was actually referring to it'll be easier than what Wednesday's got planned for you, basically. Um, because, you know, while Wednesday does care about his son, uh, Wednesday still cares about Wednesday more than he cares about anybody. I think he made that pretty clear with Demeter. I felt like Demeter made that pretty clear when she took off. Uh, because she understood that one aspect as well. Um, I thought I thought the runes thing was really interesting. Um, uh, and tears, you know, tears being burned. Um, you know, his his body is being burned. And I would love to know what Wednesday, uh, those runes that Wednesday made around his. His uh, uh, burn his pile, burning pile uh, actually meant. I wonder if it's something important or something that'll play into um, future episodes. I wonder if it was his way of banishing Tear or uh, hiding it from the hiding his death from the other gods. Uh, because after all, they do come from the same pantheon of gods. Uh, would that almost be kind of like Ken slaying to a certain extent by what he did by killing Tyr? Is this almost like a Cain and Abel kind of like situation? Just instead of one being pure and the other one being evil, both of them just being really bad people? Like, like I mean, is it one of those situations like that? I don't know. And I would have, I, I hope that they maybe reference that a little bit later. Uh, in the season. Hopefully this isn't the last that we hear. Of any of that. Um, but. I thought it was. I thought overall. Uh, this was one aspect. Uh, of the episode. That could have been maybe done better. Um, I felt like it wasn't as rewarding. As what the Selim. Laura. Um, story arc was in this episode. I thought I thought it was kind of I thought the Shadow Moon one, uh, the Wednesday and Tear fight was kind of I don't know I would give it like a six out of ten. It was decent, but it wasn't rewarding. I guess you could say it wasn't it wasn't enough of it for me to go. You know what? Hey, I really enjoyed that one scene. Uh, it didn't have that. Now back to the new gods. Um, Miss World is back, and I'm not too much of a fan of that. I, um, <laughs> sorry, I got two computers hooked up here, and my old one's kind of going a little bit crazy on me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, Miss World being back. Uh, I was kind of hoping that she was gone forever. But she ends up getting that base. I think it's called like some kind of face snatcher thing. And she hooks Tech Boy up to it again. Against his own will, of course. To try to find out or try to cure him of what is going on with him. With all this glitching. And of course he has no idea uh, how to fix himself. He knows that somehow Bilquis is responsible for it. Um... But he doesn't know what it is. He he knows that they they're talking about it. Somehow his emotion is what is playing uh, a part in this glitching, and that for him to be able to solve it, he has to find this artifact one. Now, what this artifact one is, I don't know. It could be that artifact that is seen by um, uh, 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 Mr. World. When it comes to uh, the Danny Trejo version, uh, you know, that is seen in that glass case as a first technological, uh, I guess, achievement. It could be that because that would be at the very beginning of human civilization. Could very well be that that he, he really needs to find. But his subconscious turning into this tech boy slash Bilquist. Um, I didn't feel it too much. Like, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, hey, you know what, this is really cool. But, you know, the actress that's playing Bilquist is really showing her depth. She's playing a subconscious version of Tech Boy. And overall, I thought as an actress, 
she did a pretty good job. I just didn't particularly enjoy this part of the episode uh, where she's trying to explain to him exactly what's going on. That somehow Bilquis brought out some form of emotion that he has been uh, keeping to himself. Which makes sense because at one time he used to be, I think, a human being um, that just kind of turned into this god, uh, this, this tech boy. So, you know, deep down inside of him, he does have some form of uh, emotional state about him. And so she just brought it out in him uh, and he's trying to find it. And this new Bill Quist that acts like him, that is his subconscious, is really trying to help him find it. And at the end of the day, she does allow him to be able to get out of this face snatcher thing. Um, but where that leads, I don't know. Um, we'll just have to see. But it wasn't my favorite part. It was kind of entertaining to a certain extent. It showed the actress's uh, depth that plays Bill Quist. But overall, it wasn't my favorite part of the episode. I would put it up there with the whole Shadow Moon tier and Wednesday arc in this episode. Um, you know, another thing is at the very end, um, Shadow Moon finally, um, you know, he's going back to Lakeside and he sees a woman and her child. I don't know if it was Marguerite or not. I'd have to go back and watch, but um, in the Florida sign, and she's swinging her little boy around, and so, instead of going back to Lakeside, he decides I'm going to go find Marguerite's boy in Florida. Um, so he gets a ticket instead of going to ja uh, Lakeside, he goes to Jacksonville. Now, uh, how he's going to find this boy when no one else can. I'm pretty sure Marguerite has tried many, many times. So, how he finds him, I don't know. Maybe he's going to try to find his dad. Uh, I'm assuming that he's probably going to be successful in this mission. Uh, but you know what? I'm kind of anxious to see if this is going to be the key to finding out the, really the dark side of Lakeside. Well, I think that's where where this is actually going to lead to since we're already at episode 8. we just got two more episodes to go. I think we're going to finally get to see the darker side of Lakeside. So I'm looking forward to that aspect of it. But overall, I mean, I would give this episode... Um, oh, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I felt like 2 out of 3 of the story arcs that was big... Uh, was uh, average, but I felt like the Salim story arc was superb, at least enough where that I could say, you know what, it kind of made up for the others, and the others weren't bad. I just felt like there's more that could have been done with them. They weren't bad, they were entertaining, uh, but the Salim one I thought was really beautiful i thought it really um really had uh it, it had a powerful strong message to it that really resonated with me that made me go you know what uh it made up for every flaw that i saw in the other two story arcs um by that one uh ending of the episode with Salim. so i'll give this an eight out of ten let me know what y'all think down below, guys. And as always, thanks for watching.